Okay, so we've got our um, sample board. It's got an aggregated primer on it. Uh, and uh, I've mixed up uh, some Marmarino and uh, loaded my trial. Uh, like we talked about on the last one, we fill two thirds, divided up into thirds, center, two, center, center third uh, is what we fill and we like to low profile it. So we, in class, we call it elongating it. You know, something about like so. Um, that way when you start out, the, the material's not like catching like right away, you know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> we're going to put our base coat down. This is uh, Barry Colchie's My Marino 600. And uh, I love this material. This is a, a new love. Uh, just, uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot. You can just watch along if you want to. Appreciate you watching, by the way. Nice sharing, uh, nice sharing, uh, me, me putting on plaster. Okay, like a little bit of a, a rarity. And again, what's the rule with a grain material? Always slightly more than the largest grain. So you see where we've, we've come up three levels there in that. If you start getting... Well, this is not going to do it so much. Yeah, you see the little straight scratches there? Uh, that one right there. You start getting those, you're pulling it too tight. That's not the way a, a, a grain material um, works at all. So again, we're going to load center third. And leave it sufficient. Leave it sufficient. Adequate. Uh, you want to know who taught me that? Um, Michael Glickman uh, from My Marino Depot. Years ago when I was first learning My Marino, uh, I had bought a pallet of stucco Italiano from them. That's where I'm at with my material. So as far as what's left on it. We never try to do this at the end because you're creating a, a, a texture, a DNA. So when you run out, when you run out of material, don't, don't, don't do that. Because if this was the substance, if we already had this base layer down and we were putting on the next one, that would remain. You would set a DNA pattern. Uh, so again, center third. And anyway, so he's the one that taught me that. And uh, what I'm using here is a Comey trowel. Um, with the beveled edge and it is handling the grain in this material perfectly now notice the angle of my knife when I mean the angle of my knife I mean this here so I don't know if you can see it better here that's what I mean by the angle so a low angle is still traveling still up it's not flat not flat it's up about you know 10 20 percent 10 15 percent because again, like we talked about the other day, the edge of this is beveled. Let me try to get a close up for you there. It's beveled right here. So those grains, you see them lined up there. They're getting compressed down into this material, which will be really crucial here in a little bit on the next coat. So if you remember from the last video, what's the rule of thumb um, for when it's ready for its next coat? When the gloss, when the gloss has gone away, the surface gloss. What gloss are we talking about? Let me show you. So I'm gonna dismount the camera. Okay, so again, we're using a Comey trial. We only use Comey for application. We do not use any other trial under any other circumstance. Comey, in my opinion, is the most balanced, the most lightweight, the most, even though it's rigid, it's still got flex to it. 
Uh, plenty of flex. This, this, is, this is not a flex trial, and it's got flex, okay? And that's important that there's that much give in the trial. It's important that you have this much blade on a massive wall, right? You know, if not, you're gonna end up with, you know, whatever kind of patterns over and over and over and over again, and that gets tired looking. I can't stand that sloppy, blotchy, waxy, ghosty looking crap that people are putting out. It just looks freaking ridiculous. That's the quickest end to Venetian plaster. Uh, when you put tired looking finishes up there, and I, okay, so everybody's impressed for like a day or two, a week or two, and then they're, the guests come over and they go, how come your walls are blotchy? You know, mine aren't blotchy, you know? So yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a problem. Uh, trust me, you don't believe me? Talk to a designer, ask them if they like Venetian plaster. <laughs> ask them. Uh, there are some that do, and there are some that are like, now. Nah. and the reason they don't is because they had a bad situation with it. So again, we're gonna load to the center third uh, of the trowel. You know, in here is where the bulk is. The rest is tapered out, and it'll be tapered to the end in a minute. Um, and But again, sufficient amount of material, and now the gloss is gone off here. So when you put the camera down over here, there's you look across it, there's no gloss on it, okay? So we're gonna simply uh, put on a generous amount again. You're not pulling it tight. You're just laying the material on there. Generous amount of material. So you see what I loaded again? Again, a generous amount. Again, you don't want to pull it tight. You don't want to, you know, be doing this number. If you're getting those scratches, it's too thin. You're way too thin. You're 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 not you're not even using the using a grain material the way it's supposed to be used. All right. I know I talk about a lot of shit. You're just gonna have to get over it. Uh, okay, so here we go again. And you probably can't see the edges from where the camera is on this side here. But we always do uh, some kind of an organic movement. Um, there are some out there that teach a, uh, uh, a technique. And part of the reason they teach the technique is that's the only way their tool works. Um, and, the, and, and the other part is it's the only way they, they've been taught. So therefore, it's the only way they know. Hey, uh, keep doing it that way. Uh, because you send me lots of students. Um, so, okay. So if you notice, there'll be little waves, ribbons, you know, passes of what happens. And I'll periodically let you see this as I come through on this now. So what we want to do is, is now that we have a sufficient amount of material, keep a low angle, and you want to generate your, your DNA. Nothing that can really be identified uh, quickly. There's nothing worse than walking into a room and you can see where the scaffold sections were from the so-called applicator, you know? So, you know, you, you, know you, you want to maintain some level of authenticity. So a natural ridge is okay. And all I'm doing right here is what we call setting the DNA. So that predominant ridge, that little one there, that subtle one there. That was kind of tool marky-ish, if we're being honest. Uh, but the rest of these are all really organic. Uh, I got a kind of a tool mark right here, something that looks uh, on a wall. We make what we do come through called bust that out and run an organic uh, uh, line that way. If we see too many horizontals coming off of something, we may come through and give an organic movement in there. And that sets the DNA structure. What's the DNA structure? It's the ridges. It's the ridges. Ridge, ridge, ridge. 
you know? So that's what makes the DNA. When the other material goes over it and the trial compresses it, that ridge creates a nuance. It compresses more than the low over here on the side and makes it a little bit darker. And that's what gives you your two-tone effect of your lime plasters, whether it be Marmarino or Grisello. So anyways, uh, we're going to now We'll speed dry this a little bit for the sake of the video. And uh, what are we looking for again? For the gloss to go away. When the gloss, you don't matter, there's no number. So the way it goes, here it goes, here's the way it goes. So if you're in Manchester, UK, and it's rainy and kind of cloudy outside, that may take two, three hours, four hours to get to the point you're ready to half coat. If you're here in Arizona, uh, right now it's about 65 degrees outside, dry as a bone, maybe 7% humidity maximum. Um, everybody's walking around shorts and t-shirts a uh, while ago. Um, but anyways, um, so it's gonna dry faster here because of the relative humidity and the temperature. Everything's based off of the temperature and moisture in the air. So in a dry climate, it's gonna dry quicker. In a wet climate, it's gonna take a long time. Very hard to half coat even in Florida, you know, cause they've got, you know, a lot of moisture in the air. So those walls don't dry out quick enough. It might be nine o'clock at night before they're ready. So you kind of have to watch your areas a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna force dry it and I'll come right back on. 10 minutes and uh, use the blow dryer to kind of move it very carefully so we don't crack it, you know, just bumping it along, getting the moisture off of it does it move it's that dry it's not dry dry no, let me show you what i mean by it's not dry dry we used to put a dent in it that, that's so soft and that's what that's actually what you want that's what you're looking for that's where the grain is going to go inside so now we're going to lower our trial again and here's what's going to happen this time because we have our base coat because we have our dna set now the material that we put it in, in down like before is gonna go practically twice as far because this has already got an X amount of moisture in it already, so it's not gonna pull it from here as strongly uh, as before. So you're gonna see this material start behaving very different now. What we're able to do is take that same amount of material and we're able to now Pull it a little bit tighter, a little bit. But because the grains are dropping in and compacting, there's more cream on the top, which allows it to finish out totally different. So for those of you who are wanting you know, quick. Uh, I got a friend, uh, Misha, in, uh, in Houston. And she's always talking to me about two passes. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, you know, so there's the cream. You see it? We pulled that, sand went down, packed it in there, doubled it up in quantity, left me with the cream, which now I can continue with further down the wall, right? Because the mom is doing what it was designed to do. And here's where all you pool tighters can, can really uh, go to town, you know? Because, you know, you, you, you want to compact it and you want to spread it out a little bit. I'm gonna pull a 0.5 tune here off in just a minute. Oh. Making sure I get all my edges. Mm, it's kind of tough to get up there. Let's actually go into a client's house here in a few hours. All right, so. So now, I want you to watch what begins to happen.
there's your ridge. You see it pop out just now? Okay, so now we've got a little bit of cream on the blade. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get me a damp rag and uh, show you how we pull the half coat. So we got a clean, uh, clean rag to, to in case we need to, you know, work on our trial. Um, <clears throat> so again, everything is timing. Everything is based on you leaving a sufficient amount of material. So if we take, let me show you something. Well, you see what I'm working with there? Well, I could do the board with that. I, and I, so there's so many things to show you. If I do the 0.5 right now, I'm gonna pull more. And you notice we didn't get scratches because the, the grains are going down. They're actually revealing themselves right now. Um, and that's why I got the rag for in case I want to clean that. In case I want to clean that cream off uh, and offload it. So. Pay attention to the angle of my knife. You don't have to do it organically like that. I'm kind of doing it theatrically so that you can get an idea. You know, I over uh, exaggerate it so that you, you know, so that you don't think, oh, he just did it straight. No, I didn't. So, just about ready to start doing it. It's thin right now. Let me show you something kind of cool. So right there, I pulled off the half coat. So we're taking clean the trial now, right? So you, you saw me uh, embed the grain, pull the cream. I simply wipe the trial down. All right? And then now we're going to take in... Oh, we, we can do it straight. When we're on the jab, this is, you know, we're, doing, we're doing it straight because we're doing, uh, you know, a lot of air. Well, we don't want one two-foot sample there to be, you know, striped. So I try to keep it organic, and plus I, I need to show you. So let me show you something. See it? Straight green. Now here's the beauty of that. You got a low area that you didn't do or you missed, you can use, you can use that cream. I wish you could feel it right now because it's now turned into a very smooth surface. So let me show you something really cool here. I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna take and add a little bit of fresh material. All right, so why don't I take that cream? Well, the cream's already dried out. Some of the moisture went that way, some went on the knife, it's been, it's been moving around, so it's drying out. This is wet. So now we have extra cream. Heavy whipping cream right here. So we lay it down and watch what happens. Trip you out a little bit. Let me show you something. Look at the quantity on there. It's pretty much more than what I started with, right? So what happened there? Getting barnacles dropped off. But let's say that happens on a job site. What do you do? Cream. Too much cream, my friend. Too much cream. So can we do that again? Yes. Do we need to? No. You can you can start creating a moisture issue 
But let's just say that you, you felt like you needed to, to do an area over. You didn't like the way it is. Here's your chance. Watch this last time because remember that this material, this material is all up on the blade now. And what we're doing is we're dropping the grain down. We're compacting it. It's forcing the cream up. Let me show you the cream. Nothing but cream. As Rico would say, too much cream, my friend. Too much cream. Okay. So, we're gonna let that set up. When it gets to the right time, when it gets to the right time, um, I'm going to give it its, its uh, final finish compression. And uh, my trial edge dug there. So, you know, we may take a little bit of some of that dried out creamy stuff that I offloaded a while ago. Thus the beauty of Marmarino. So it's still low, and you can leave it set up a little bit and then come back and do it again in a little while. Just run it over and it'll do the exact thing, same thing we did right there. But we're gonna do that again in a bit. So let's just let it advance out the drying a little bit and we will continue from there. All right, so now it's, uh, you know, very damp, still very damp. Uh, clean my trowel, and wet rag. And make sure that it's a thorough clean. You know, we're using a grain material, so thorough clean for a grain material. Don't worry about these little barnacles here because sand, right? Well, that's what you got. That's what made your material, sand. So uh, <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is, and there's a part that I love about Marmarino 600 and the Comey trial that is beveled edge is now when we have it up at a little angle we're actually very flat so when i'm having it at an angle right here because of that bevel it's like this mini compression so what we're going to do is we're going to compress this material and what we're doing is compacting the grains or what we would call closing off the pour Take that little residual off. And now we do it. Let's say another direction. We're all there. There's a, there's a camera and a light there, so I'm trying to avoid that a little bit. Here's what I love about the Marmita. This is what I was saying. The Marmita 600, we could sit here and do this all night long, and it's only gonna go up to like, a low glow satin. It's never gonna get to any kind of thing that you would call a shine or just just has a really super, super, super soft eggshell type finish. And that's my favorite part about it. So for everybody that's wanting the in and out coating, I can do it in one day. This is a one day coating right here. All these coats have to be put on in the same day because of the timing, right? You see that grain coming forth? Look at all that beautiful grain coming out. Okay, so we'll speed up the drying a tiny bit and give it one more quick pass. Right, I'm gonna do a little warm air across it just to move it forward just so we don't have to sit here and wait. Keep your trowel clean. Run it from all directions. Perform you some compressions. So, okay, so now it's dry, so we're just gonna do the quick final compression for to get that, what we call that little sheen. That's it. And what you're gonna see on the is a slight angular sheen. Very, very, very simple and solid. View of that with lighting, you know, as you can kind of see what that actually looks like. 
I'm gonna try to get it real super flat for you. It's hard to see it. Let's try to do this. 